Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Daniel Lungu, and I'm a student in Professor Matthew Wells' class, Introduction to Physical Limnology. For the next 10 minutes, I will be talking about the fifth largest lake in China, known as Chao Lake. So here we have a Google Earth Pro, and what I'm going to do right now is show you where exactly Chao Lake is. So Chao Lake is located in Asia. It's located specifically in China. So as Google Earth zooms in now, we're going to have an idea of exactly where it is. So here's Chao, Chao Lake. As you can see, it forms almost a U, and it has many rivers and streams that come into it, known as estuaries. So when we click on an image, for example, let's click on this one, you can see it's an agricultural-based environment. The lake itself extends 760 kilometers square and has a mean depth of 2.7 meters. So it's a very shallow lake, but it's actually quite large. With growing agricultural businesses increasing and a growing population, more and more pollutants and contaminants are, are being um, run off into the lake. So as we zoom out, you can actually see how blue this water is in contrast to how green this water is here. And that will give you an idea of the eutrophic conditions that's currently experiencing. So Chao Lake is pretty green. I'm going to be showing you a couple pictures and um, I don't know. You can be the judge for yourself whether you'd be swimming in that lake or you'd be swimming in a clear lake. So because the lake's pretty green, we can already make a couple assumptions. It's a shallow lake. It's green. It's, uh, it's pretty much eutrophic. So we can assume that there's a high quantity of phosphorus and possibly heavy metals in the water. There must be also a lot of suspended particles because the clarity of the water is so bad. I mean, it's so unclear. The green is almost opaque. So we're going to examine the nutrient quantities and specifically we're going to be looking at estuaries so we're going to be looking at the small streams that flow into the lake because these tend to be a point sources of pollution that come from non-point sources from surface runoff groundwater runoff and so on and so on so Chao Lake has about 10 main streams that flow into it um, we're going to be looking at a study where a group of scientists using a gravity core sampler took a sample of the sediment at the bottom of each entrance to the estuary into the lake and we're going to be looking at the quantities of heavy metals in specific and phosphorus. Also because it's a green lake um, I'll be showing you some pictures of the fish in the lake. We do not have fish that need high oxygen. We have fish that don't need a lot of oxygen. They're known as bottom feeders. Um, you guys are probably more well known with the term catfish. There's um, quite big catfish in the lake and I'm going to be showing you one particular kind of freaking looking one. So we're going to jump right into that and start looking at a map of uh, Chao Lake. So as you can see here we have a diagram of Chao Lake. Here are the 10 biggest estuaries that are linked to Chao Lake. These streams are known for bringing in the most pollution and contaminants. Each red dot represents a sampling site where three samples were taken using a gravity core sampler. The samples taken were of undisturbed sediment and they were able to show quantities of heavy metals and phosphorus. As you can see here with the stars, they represent nickel. And there's high quantities of nickel throughout each estuary or stream. And if we go below here, we see a significantly high amount of phosphorus in E10. So going back to the map, we found E10 is the greatest pollution source for Chao Lake, bringing in the most heavy metals and phosphorus. So this is important because if we know where the pollution source is, we are able to control it. We are able to minimize the pollution. So phosphorus is known to cause eutrophic conditions. It builds up at the bottom, it accumulates, we get increasing amounts of algae bloom. With the population growing, 
we get increased agriculture intensification. Okay, so now that we've established that there are sources of pollutions um, that are entering Chow Lake, um, I've put together a couple pictures for you to see, just so you can get a better visual of the environment. Okay, so after that dramatic video, we're going to take it a tone down and let's look back at some lecture slides. So these were taken from lecture five and um, to the left we have the phosphorus limitation theory. So this theory was obviously tested in the experimental lakes area of northwest Ontario and it shows the effect of phosphorus. So the cause of algae, um, the greenness, the the bad clarity and basically we get the eutrophic lake so as you can see towards your right I'm gonna list them in case you can't read it has high nutrient levels poor light penetration low dissolved oxygen shallow waters high algae growth carp bullhead and catfish so we actually lose a bunch of um, fish populations such as pike bass trout fish that need high oxygen So as you could see in that video, like, I don't know, I've never caught a catfish that big. So that was the first time watching it and that was unreal for me. Um, I was really surprised to see a bottom feeder that big and then I saw even bigger ones and it started to get creepier and creepier. They can weigh up to 60 kilograms and they can go up almost anything. So with eutrophic conditions in this lake, these are the types of uh, fish species you'll be finding. It's called the Chow Praia Catfish, but is also known as the Dog Eating Catfish. I wonder why. <laughs> can be referred to as cultural eutrophication. And this is basically the process of anthropogenic impact on freshwater systems such as Chow Lake. And it's human impact. So there's obviously a lot of work to do to fix this lake right now and it's not going to fix itself so luckily a bank of china adb the asian development bank donated 250 million dollars for eight new treatment water plants so this is good they can start using water for irrigation again drinking again and hopefully fishing who knows um it's going to be a very expensive procedure and it's going to be also a long-term process. It's not going to happen in a month. It's going to happen over, over the course of time. But these are the steps that we're going to have to start taking to restore all the lakes that we've damaged. So this can be used as an example that can be related to many other situations happening around the world. At this point in time, I'd like to thank you for listening to my presentation.